what is going on guys brown here and welcome to the start of a new series on my channel it is course f1 2020 my team in the background you'll see me selecting my team name and everything but if you are hope for this series and you're new around here or if you're coming back to my channel then make sure to hit the like button subscribe if you are new and we'll get into this video so because I am the most creative person ever, my, my team's going to be called Brown GP. I know, very creative name. I am. Um, I could not think of a better name than that. So that will do for the time being. Now we've got to pick a sponsor, and I spent a long time reading through these sponsors. I've seen other people, and not to be really be different to them, but I wanted to make it easy because I know. This is very much the definition of a road to glory. We are right at the bottom. It was between, however you say that, Starwood and Loop. And in the end, I did pick Loop. Now it's time to pick our engine supplier. So, of course, we've got Renault, Mercedes, Ferrari and Honda. And after Kyle shuts up, we can get into this now. So you can see. So now we've also got money from the signing bonus. And actually, I know... Um, a lot of people have gone, but I'm going to go with Honda. A, because then we're still kind of a um, works team. And I kind of want to take Honda back to the top. And if Honda can take us there and we can take Honda, I think that would be a very interesting kind of series. Get Honda back to the McLaren days as centre. Now it's time to choose our teammate. Of course, we have to choose from the F2 drivers. And there's only a selection. So I look for all the drivers, and I know I've seen a lot of people go for Mick Schumacher, but I know you can't really say this because it's a game. But I was kind of looking at real life, and I watched the F2 race for the Austrian Grand Prix, and I was really impressed with Wan Yu Zhou. So that's who I'm going to pick. Yes, these stats aren't great, but neither is the rest of them there, apart from Mick Schumacher. Uh, but Mick, uh, and he is a little bit more expensive, and we can put money into the car. So first we have delivery, and I really like this livery. Um, there's also this one, which is nice. But I wanted a delivery that had quite a lot of colours on it, so I'm going to go with that green and blue one. But we are going to pick this one here, because I, I do quite like that. It just looks quite cool as well for the colors i'm going to go with my youtube colors so they are gray red black and white obviously there's only three colors so this is my first attempt and i thought it looked very dark so i swapped the red and the black around so there's a black stripe and then the red obviously on the car and i thought that looked a lot better but let me know what you think of it down below maybe we could make some few changes down the line and I'm thinking, keep it fresh every season. I'll come back to this and change delivery a bit. For the badge, I spent about an hour working this one out. I've used this one because it's the closest one that looks like a B. And I quite like that one. Now we have team colours to deal with. And I just used, um, you, you can set it to default colours from the car. So I just did that. So here you can see our team colours are grey, red and black there and they'll be kind of seen and the primary colour, the very first one you can see those grey, that's kind of um, what you see when your car's going around. Before we go to the interview with um, Will Buxton, I've actually gone back and because I missed out the, um, the racing suit so I've done that, you can see it's red, white and black, which looks quite nice. We've got black gloves with a bit of red on. And then I've just gone for a black and red helmet. Just because I like the helmet to suit the car. But now we have an interview with Will Buxton. And I'm just going to let this play out and I'll be back after. Okay, we're live in 5, 4, 3, 
Hello folks and welcome to the HQ of Formula One's newest team. We've been invited backstage to gain an exclusive insight into what could be one of the most exciting entries in the sport for many years. Now we've seen a number of new teams enter the sport over the last decade, amongst their number Manor, Caterham, HRT and of course Haas. And while some have proved to be successful, others have morphed into different teams and some have disappeared completely. What marks this team out though as being something different is that its owner is also its driver. Now, there's a rich history of that in Formula One too. Sir Jack Brabham, John Surtees, Graham Hill and Bruce McLaren all drove their own cars in the sport, but it has become increasingly rare in recent years. What's very special about this team though is that, that while the team itself is new to Formula One, so too is its driver and owner. Whatever happens this season, you've already made the history books. Tell me, do you feel up to the mammoth task of both managing and driving for a Formula One team? Every team needs two drivers, but what was it that drew you to your teammate? No one aims to finish bottom of the table. Who's the team you're aiming to be? How are you expecting the car to feel out on track? The other teams now have years of experience, both on and off the track. How are you planning to catch up to them? Overtaking is a key part of this sport. How have you ensured that your car can take advantage of each opportunity that comes your way? And finally, which of your new departments are you most proud of? Well, that's about all we've got time for here. We will see how this fledgling team fares in its first Grand Prix. OK, great, thank you. That's a wrap. Well, Bucks and asking the questions everyone wants answered, but to get some extra money first, I'm actually going to do a team merchandise sale. See if anyone wants the team gear. I don't know whether they'd want to this these are all the different departments i think they look really cool the um this one the simulator one always makes me laugh because it literally looks like the f1 game like in terms of like it's not really much of a simulator it's just kind of him sat in a chair with like a just like a frost master wheel or something um then of course we've got the sponsor bit but let's go to the car launch And there she is, the brown GP car, but that's enough of all the nitty gritty stuff. Let's get into the first race weekend, shall we? We're here in Australia, you can see the team colours looking really, really nice. I'd definitely buy one of those shirts if they were real. But let's go to practice, I'm not really going to show too much of practice after this episode. Um, I'll just focus on qualifying in the race you can see the race suit there but let's head to practice hey boss this is jeff just oh, want to no. say thanks for trusting me as your race engineer i won't let you down the car is ready to go, but it's brand new, of course, so there may be a few issues here and there. We'll be keeping a close eye on all the data. I don't know about trust, Jeff. That's very dodgy. Especially some of the things he told us on F1 2019, if he was around on the channel then. But, let's excuse the fact that we've probably already got our first firing of the season. And let's head out for the first time in our car as we unlock. Uh, Xbox achievement 
let's just go out and see what we can do it's the very very first lap pretty much the first lap on this game apart from this I'd done five laps of Zambort and five laps of Hanoi but I'm gonna go away do practice and I'll be back with qualifying in just a second I'm loving some of the um, shots this year of the track but as we come to the end of our very first qualifying lap and it's not looking great I was really struggling the first sector we were very quick the second sector we were rapid the third sector it just all went apart especially in the last two corners as we scraped the wall there up to the line and we're going to set a 125 123.8 which is going to put us 11th we would have seen we went 10th for a brief second before Kimi Raikkonen shut us down but now we're all the way down in P20 we were down in sector 1 we're up in sector 2 and we're by what 1 tenth of a second breaking into the second to last corner and I don't know whether it's just me but that the second to last corner that left hander felt so much tighter than it did on F1 2019 I was really struggling to to spot my breaking point we found four attempts but it's still not going to get us off the back row of the grid and our first qualifying session is going to put us last one huge joe is 20th in a kind of um sandwich with nicholas de Tifi and george russell Let's get no into more the testing race. no more practice this is the real deal and it's make or break here at albert park home of the australian grand prix since 1996 and home to round one of this year's formula one world championship we go racing today then in the state of victoria where the drivers have 16 corners and 3.3 miles to navigate at an average lap speed of around 120 miles an hour the close proximity of the barriers makes accidents inevitable and recent history shows us that a safety car is not at all out of the question. Can Mercedes start with victory in their bid to win a seventh consecutive constructors title? Could Ferrari establish an advantage early on? And with 22 cars on the grid, how quickly can the new team find their footing? Well, it's great to be back, Anthony Davidson. We've got a lot to talk about this year. That's right, Crofty. It felt like a long winter, but it's good to finally be back. I have to think the usual suspects will battle it out at the front, but there are always going to be some teething problems early on in the season, so whoever can keep on top of their issues will have the advantage today. As I mentioned earlier, we're up to 11 teams this season, with a new entry run by, well, of all things, an owner-driver. That's something we haven't seen in this sport since Hector are back over four decades ago. So how are they looking so far? Ever since their participation was announced, there were questions being asked about whether an outfit like this could survive. And certainly it's proving to be a trial by fire so far. Let's hope they can continue to draw an investment and find a little more pace as well. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Vettel, Max Verstappen and Albon, Raikkonen, Norris, Sainz and Antonio Giovinazzi, Ricardo, Ocon, Roman Grosjean and Magnussen, Perez, Gasly, Lance Stroll and Daniel Kvyat, Russell, Joe, Latifi and Brown. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So very much two by two grid at the top with the top three teams. But strategy wise, I don't really know to be honest. It's my very, very proper first race. So I'm just going to do what it tells me to do. So we're going to do softs onto mediums. But let's get into the start of this race. With these new, the actual red light sequence. And for the first time this series, it's lights out and away we go. The two Mercedes getting away well. We've got a decent start in the background. We're still last. We're going to try and send it round the outside there. We've pushed um, Nicholas Latifi. We're side by side with Latifi now. Can we get the run in? We're using that overtake button heading down towards 
turn one down the inside. We're going to send it. We've sent it on Wan Hu Zhou as well. And we're trying to get round the outside there of Lance Stroll. We've done that. And now of George Russell is the two Alpha Tauris further up the road. And we've actually got a decent start. We've gained, what, five positions at the start. Now we're right on the back of, I believe it's Daniel Kvyat, the Russian in his Alpha Tauri. As here, back at us comes George Russell. Around the outside, there's contact there as I just kind of turned into the back of him. He broke a lot harder than I was expecting. We're going to use that overtake button to try and pull away and try and defend the Brit, our fellow Brit. And now we're going to skip on. Here comes Lance Stroll attacking George Russell around the outside. We're starting to break away though from these two battling. George Russell defends and this is just kind of helping us out a little bit. Lance Stroll definitely not where he should be in that racing point. I'm not sure where Perez is. I just know he's a long, long way up the road. As here he comes again then Lance Stroll, round the outside he backs out, he's not going to risk that, but he will have another look here, as, oh that was very very close there, George Russell leaving it very late to come across, but now Wan Hu Joe's having a look at Lance Stroll, Stroll does defend, but it was at this moment you can see as pulling away, it was around about now, where I realised that I had the engine turned it to rich and the overtake button on and because I was still getting used to the controls I wasn't really happy as Lance Stroll does this time I believe get past George Russell, no George Russell's still there it's Mercedes power versus Mercedes power but Lance Stroll this time gets the job done or does he? there's a double lock up there but he does get the job done in that racing point and now is hunting after us, after us. But as I was mentioning, I was when I was um, right behind the Alpha Tauris, I was I had the engine minor rich and then the um, the overtake button on, and I didn't realise as Lance Stroll gets past us pretty easily. There, there's bigger fish to fry. We are nowhere near the racing point or anything like that. He's skipping on now a couple of laps. This is Antonio Giovinazzi's race ending. At least I think it's Giovinazzi. Yes, it is. The Italian, his engine blowing. That's a Ferrari engine. Could this be poor reliability for the Ferrari? But you can see here, I don't know whether this is a glitch, but Giovinazzi just left it on the side of the track and nothing really happened after that for a little while. We are going to come into the pits to make our one and only stop on lap 10 of this Grand Prix we trundle down the pit lane now and into the pit box we go, 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 go. and for our very first pit stop a 2.4 second stop it's kind of bang on where it should be I think that's respectable I see the fastest pit stop in Formula 1 is 1.8 seconds so 6 tenths but bearing in mind that's probably, that is our very very first pit stop um, not too bad as large strolls engines blown it's absolutely gone there massive engine failure and he's crawling around the track where is he gonna park up anywhere what's happening here into the hairpin and he's parked it not there stroll and that's um our teammate into the safety cars come out one who joe is gone into the back because what is Lance Stroll doing? He's left it there. Roman Grosjean, of course he's got to hit something. It's Roman Grosjean. But also Carlos Sainz and Sebastian Vettel getting caught up in that. And now things are going to get interesting. Of course we've already pitted. We were literally, there was one lap in it from us pitting and then Lance Stroll. But I thought at the time I didn't know that um, Wan Hu Joe was actually caught up in the incident. I didn't realise he had damage to his front wing as well. So I was thinking, right, this is going to be close between me and Wan Hu Joe. He could beat us out, but he doesn't because he had to change his front wing. And now, Charles Leclerc has got past both Mercedes. So has, I believe, that is um, 
Albon in the Red Bull. So he's on for his first podium, but we won't mention that, <laughs> especially at times like this. We'll probably end up jinxing it for him. But Lance, um, Charles de Clare, definitely not Lance Stroll, as we are now right on the back of Pierre Gasly. We're just kind of we're just kind of chilling here, waiting for the Alpha Tauri, I think. Um, we're not quite there yet, but this is the very first round, so we'll see what we can do when we get to Bahrain and Vietnam. But as we put the power down, you can see that Alpha Tower is already gone. We're left defending Nicholas Latifi in his Williams, as he's going to try and go around our outside. We do defend that. Now though he's on to lap 15 and he's getting closer again here. He's going to go to our inside this time. We tried to put the car in the middle of the track but the Latifi's there still. If you're wondering why the Rocket is still on the Williams then there hasn't been an update like to update the liveries yet but I've I do believe that update came out in that, um, on on Thursday, which is today, um, for the actual full release of the game tomorrow, in terms of recording this video. But here comes Nicholas the TV. He's got the job done in us now. Heading into turn one, he has a double lockup and just gives us the position back. And he's lost out to one he Joe and George Russell there. Here's a replay. We made a massive mistake into the second to last corner. The TV breezes past us and then just misses breaking point, locks those front tyres and is down at the back again behind George Russell and Wan Hu Joe. This is what it looked like from George Russell's perspective. You can see the TV getting that job done and then just the lock up. And George Russell, to be fair, he had a look at us, but he's not quite got that as now. We've got to get the hammer down to be honest we're still kind of here here comes George Russell on the outside of us so we really are coming under threat from the Williams and this is kind of where our car is looking to be we don't actually have any upgrades on the car yet but the game puts you in front of Williams anyway which quite ironic I know but now here comes George Russell again he's going to go to our inside we're going to try I have to defend round the outside, but George Russell's got that job done, or has he? He's clipped the inside curb, I think. That slowed him down. And now here comes George Russell again on the outside. There's contact there with George Russell. We're going to send it down the inside now. One he Joe could have a look round the outside. He doesn't, and everything stays how it was. As we are really struggling, as we make a mistake, we're a little bit wide, but these hard tyres were horrendous. I had no pace on them. But another thing that I did, I down the inside George Russell again, which wasn't helping either. As this went race on, I kept having to change with the controls. I really wasn't happy with that. And at some point, I don't, in the race, I don't know when, as we make a mistake, I'd actually asked for more downforce so I had seven wings on the front and that really didn't work because there's contact there there's a bit of front wing going flying we've got sandwich in the middle between our teammate Wan Yu Joe and George Russell Wan Yu Joe's got two positions now and we've got ahead of George Russell still we're just about to stay in front of him but now Wan Yu Joe is leading this kind of pack this is a replay then of what happened we kind of got sandwiched but we also got punted into our teammate Wan Yu Joe and actually giving him a bit of front wing damage, as you see here. So look, there's the contact, and we just got punted into our own teammate by George Russell. But a fair play, Wan Hu Joy. Absolutely sending it down the inside and getting that double move complete. This is what well, it's from George Russell's perspective. As is now right on the outside, he gets forced out by us, he's on, onto the grass and now into the right hander and we left him no space whatsoever. We've just been following one here, trying to get close enough, he's really done a good job of defending. But here we come now, we're going to get closer and closer to the back 
of that brown GP car, our own car. We can't quite get close enough. We could have a go though into turn three. We can have the RS turn the overtake button on. And we are going to lick the stamp and absolutely send it down the inside on one huge joy. And that is that place back. But now one huge joy, that front wind damage definitely costing him as all the way around the outside goes George Russell and gets that move complete. And it won't be long before Nicholas Latifi, I believe it is, gets the same fate round the outside. He's still there though, Juan Hijo is not giving up, but round the outside, Nicholas Latifi, I think it is, gets the job done and is passed our teammate Juan Hijo. And now on the back of it, so I think it was... Um, Latifi that got past one here during the first place but here comes now you can see two laps to go and we've made a massive mistake and we've basically waved Nicholas Latifi through and he's going to get P17 as on to the final lap we go Charles Leclerc driven an absolutely outstanding race by the young Monagas has been around the final corner and he is going to win in Melbourne. It's another Ferrari winning belt in Melbourne like they always seem to do at the minute. Albon second, Hamilton third, I believe it is. We're going to come home for P, P19. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Ferme. Another excellent win from Ferrari. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. So we actually finished P19 because when the safety car was out I actually tapped the back of Pierre Gasly and we cost a 5 second penalty for that that I didn't actually realise I had so even if we hadn't have made that mistake and let Latifi pass we would have finished behind him anyway so team retires in that race Giovinazzi and Lance Stroll so this is the constructors not really any point showing you the drivers because it's just the result of that race we're behind Williams, Ferrari leading the way from Red Bull, from Mercedes, Alfa Romeo, McLaren, Racing Point, Haas, Renault, Alfa Tauri, and then Williams, and then we are last. Let's go and talk to our mess sure best mate, Claire. I'm happy with that. You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? Uh, not really, Claire. I mean, we gained quite a few at the start and then we just dropped back because those hard times were horrendous. It wasn't the cleanest race today was it? Not really, George Russell absolutely punted us into our own teammates but yep not really clean to be honest. Great, well that's everything. And this is the new thing, this is the team acclaim so I'm not really too up to date of how this works, but I know um, your acclaim builds up and then that works towards your team acclaim and makes that work and um, boosts that as well. So we made a little bit more money from that 2.5, 2.4 million is our current bank balance. Uh, I'd like to think that F1 teams have a little bit more than that. We are going to make another upgrade on the chassis side because 
this car is very very unstable it was so oversteery so they're going to come in a new thing this year is that whereas before when you did an upgrade it would tell you what race weekend it's going to come in for it just shows you the date because of the calendar system but before we round out this video we're going to sign a secondary sponsor and i had a look through all of them uh, uh, there were some that were gave you a lot of money but they were really unrealistic we're going to go with this Havaza of, is that how you pronounce it I don't know so all we have to do for that I believe is complete so many laps in a race weekend and now we're going to do some different things to keep us busy until the next Grand Prix in Bahrain so we're going to do a driver promotion that's going to be one day but this is the car, I really hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in Bahrain.